But anyways, let's kickstart this list. It'll come to no one's surprise that number one on this list is the super talented uh, Tom Pitcock, who seems to have been around for years. I remember seeing him win in uh, the tour series. He was on one of the guest teams. And um, yeah, he's just supremely dominant. This year, he won the under-23 Giro. He's signing with Enios Grandiers, even though Bradley Wiggins told him not to. He was a junior world time trial champion on the road. And of course, in cyclocross, he's won the junior nationals, the junior worlds, and the junior European at the same time. Then won the under-23 cyclocross worlds as well. And then last year, he finished second to Macho van der Poel, the demigod himself. Enios are kind of going through this uh, generational shift as well. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's the right move. We've seen a lot of t- good talent go to Ineos and look wasted. Iban Sosa, need I say anything more? He doesn't look like the sort of rider he could be. I know he just won a Giro d'Italia stage, but Narvaez could have done a lot more as well. He's one of these very talented action riders. And Tom Pidcock is exceptionally talented. I remember seeing him when he was 18, as you mentioned, back at the Tour Series, a couple of years back in the UK, and he was dominating those races. As someone who just came into the sport, if you think about it in relative terms, at the, the level he's at, we thought he might sign last. Last year, no. He took a year to develop a little bit more, even after he won the Paris Roubaix Espoir uh, last year and the Tour Alsace, which is a big race for the youth category. Alas, he's here now, and I think Pidcock is going to be one of the guys to watch. No matter which race he enters, we're going to be looking at him. If you remember at the European Championships, he was attacking all the time, and we were thinking, is this the, the time that Pidcock really steps to the front? And it might be next year, but I think Ineos isn't, isn't the team. Ineos have never done particularly well in the Healy Classics. Wild Pauls did win a monument, but that wasn't really by intention. He happened to be in the front group. He didn't use any like, he didn't use the sky trade to his own advantage. He sort of played the game tactically on his own. And Pidcock, as we know, can win classics, Hilly or Cobble. That's not Ineos's forte at all. Paris will be Espoir is a massive race to win. But if you look back at the kind of people who won it, Bob Jungels has won it, and so has Pipo Ghana. And these are guys that aren't really cobble guiders per se. So there might be some space for him to become a mountain rider. And I do really hope that. And he looked so good at the baby Gido that he has the room to become a climber. But he's going to have to compete with Pavel Sivakov. Egan Bernal with Geraint Thomas for a couple more years now with the Yates involved maybe Iban Sosa Richard Carapaz well, all these guys eight. he's going to have to compete with in his most formative years where he could try to develop very very quickly I don't think he's going to have the opportunities that UAE gave to Tari Pagacha who is a very similar age to him I stand by my decision. I don't think this is a good move. I think he would have been a lot better going off to someone like EF. Yeah, that's true, actually. Or even the new NTT team, which we will discuss. I don't particularly like NTT. <laughs> I suggest you watch that video. Yeah, I'm not particularly complimentary. We found out. <laughs> that would suit his style more. Even even Alpes and Phoenix, if he wants to stay in the cyclocross scene, he could do that kind of thing. Because of time, let's move on to the next one on our list, and that is Harry Sweeney, who is going to... Is it Lotto Sudal? Yeah, he's going to Lotto. So he won the under-23 version of the Lombardia, which is a very big race, to be honest, in 2018. So like nowhere near where he is now. He already finished 10th in the Tour de Langkawi, which I really like the Tour de Langkawi. But yeah, what do you think of this young Australian? Uh, I mean, I'm not infatuated by Harry Sweeney. Um, oh, Australian. Shock. <laughs> exactly. I think I think people know my track record. I should be Richard exiled Ford. from that nation. I don't think he's all that. He's all that. I understand why he's been picked up by uh, Lotto Sudal. It makes sense because they do have an Australian Anglophone uh, sort of subsection of riders, especially with Caleb Ewan. But his results this year haven't been all that in- incredible in the climbing. Uh, Giro de- della Regione Fruili Venezia, he came second on a stage there but came 23rd overall not all that good and this year is not too much to write home about apart from his win I, I think Scott's a much bigger fan of his <laughs> but if you do go no. back and, and look at his um, I mean I like the Lombardia winners, the Lombardia win the under 23 well, yeah, if you go back and look at it it's it's some good guys. Jenny Moscon has won it. Jan Polans, Fausta Masnada, Han von Hooker, Huk, who was uh, leading the white jersey for a couple of days. Even like Ciccone has done well in that in the past. It's a decent history to it, but I really don't think Harry Sweeney is going to be the next big thing. Quote me in a couple of years' time. But I stand by that. So anyways, moving on to a rider that you are very excited about. Olaf Koy is how I think I pronounce it. But he he's the guy I'm really looking forward to seeing. Yeah, so just um, putting some context, about- he is, he well, this season he was at the Jombo Visma development team. Yeah, they do have a development team that is a continental team. And he's moving up, which is nice to see because a lot of these guys 
who are in these world tour teams, uh, their development team, sometimes they don't e- move up to the main team, which is so weird. And I think that's why a lot of Sadal under 23, which is, isn't a continental team, but a lot of these development teams have actually shut down because they got annoyed that the riders that they were developing didn't move to the senior squad. They rather moved to one of their competitors. But in this case, this very talented sprinter, he has well decided to go from the Yombo Visma development team up to Yombo Visma, which seems a bit weird because yet another sprint on what many people now think is the best GC squad. 184, he's fairly tall. He is Dutch after all. But this year, he's won left, right, and center. Uh, he won a lot of the races in uh, Croatia. There are quite a few classics there for the youth guys. He won a lot of those. He was contending in, in the Czech Cycling Tour Classics, got top 10s in both the Dutch and European under-23 races. Remember, he was 18 at the time, so he was contending in those races. And he went on to win a stage of the Copy Bartali, which is a proper high quality race. He won a sprint stage, and guess who he beat there? He beat Phil Bauhau, uh, Jempi Drucker, like proper sprinters, even Ethan Hater, who was signed for Ineos Grenadiers in the past year. So this man has has some legs on him. And at just 19 years old, I think it's going to be a brilliant opportunity for him to be in the proper Jumbo Visma team. And uh, Olaf Koy as well is coming in to a team which has Dylan Hunebe here for the sprints. They won't for the first three months of next year, so that might give Olaf Koy a good chance to, to go at it himself especially given that Jumbo Visma don't really have all that many sprinters and with Armand Grandal Janssen leaving it uh, this year and so is Tom Laser, two of Hunebeke's good lead out men Koy I think will really be, be given a good opportunity to show his stuff so next rider on our list is a bit peculiar yeah the Norwegian rider who used to actually be a skier what was his name Jonas Klebu Husloff uh, Klebo, cross-country skier, co- cross-country superstar, let's add. This isn't just some skier. This is creme de la creme of cross-country skiing. How many medals has he won at the Olympics? Three gold medals at the Olympics, and he also has four world championship medals to his name, three of which are gold. He is something to behold. I know he's bra- he's breaking um, records in the skiing world, especially for the sprints. He's got 24 individual sprint victories, which beats the World Cup record, which was held by... Um, Emil uh, Jönsson, a Swedish uh, skier, but he is he is making the transition to cycling, which really astounds me because he's very very good at at skiing, like very very good. Scott will probably know more as a as our resident Scandinavian on on the on the, on the skiing scene. Denmark's notoriously rubbish at skiing. When your highest point is about two hundred meters above the ground, I can see why man made as well. But yeah, it should be very interesting. Um, these con- cross country skiers they have some of the best VO two maxes, the Norwegian ones in recorded history, and of course the highest recorded uh, VO two max was actually Oscar Svensson, who is Norwegian. Surprise, surprise! He won the junior time trial title a few years ago, but for whatever reason he stopped cycling. I think he recorded. Uh, VO2 max of 98 or something crazy but yeah that would have been interesting and equally here he's be- obviously very good at cross country skiing so <laughs> Olympic winner but yeah it'll be very interesting let's hope it's not just a PR stunt because like if you're a superstar in skiing why would you come to cycling and ride on a pro continental team and not be the star of the team I definitely think this is a PR stunt but it's still interesting like let's be honest it's still you don't see this every day exactly uh, shall we move on to the next yep. one so here we have you're the Mouse, 1 meter 90, 22 years old, one of the older guys in this field. He's done a lot this year. He won the Belgian under 23 road race championships. He came second in Paris Tour. And he also won a stage of the Baby Giro, came seventh at the European Championships. But the thing I'm most interested in is his result at the Czech Cycling Tour. He took two stage wins there at a race that is usually more for the seniors and the proper pros. And at the Czech Cycling Tour, he beat the former Belgian champion, Tim Merlier. He also beat Max Kanter. That was on stage two that he won. And, then, and on stage three, he took another sprint win that was ahead of Max Kanter and Martin Lars, who rides for Bora Hansgrohe. And I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, Maus at the World Tour next year when he moves up to Bora Hansgrohe. I don't know what role he's going to play there, but it'll definitely be interesting as as a young sprinter. Yeah, and this SEG Academies team have produced some very good riders in the past, like Fabio Jakobsen came from that team as well. So there's definitely some quality coming. But yeah, he, he should be very interesting to see and like taking the two scallops of the Czech tour, seeing like these development riders beating actual, well, not actual pros, but like beating big names already on the world tour is quite incredible. Yeah, anyways, going from SEG Racing Academy to the next 
SEG Racing Academy graduate, I guess now. We have David Decker. And David Decker, again, another sprinter. But what do you think? Hey, he, he won this Dutch race. Well, it's a 1.2. He beat the season pro of uh, Brenton Jones. So, like, definitely a fast guy that he managed to win against. Yeah, I think here that his biggest result, let's look towards uh, Le Samen, which is a, uh, a very, very quick Belgian race with some cobbles and a little bit of hills towards the end. It's a pretty gnarly race. It was won by Hugo Ostetel, the sprinter at the World Tour this year. But David Decker came third. He actually beat Clément Venturini and even the European champion Giacomo Nizzolo at this race, which proves that he's pretty good. He's older. He's going to be 23 once we properly get racing next year. But uh, as, <laughs> as the former Dutch champion, he is going over to Team Jumbo Visma. Sorry, it feels weird saying he's getting on. Uh, he is moving to Jumbo Visma for next year. But uh, Decker, I don't know. And again, another sprinter. Why do you need a sprinter on the best World Tour team? That it doesn't really make sense, to be honest. I can see it for Koi, though. I can see it working for him. Once once Hunevich is done with, <laughs> Koi is going to be the man. I think Decker is, 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 is going to be the big victim of that because he's going to get overshadowed now that he's a... Uh, He'll be 23. Hunebeek is going to be miles better than him. And Hunebeek is only about four years older than him. And then someone who's three years younger than him, uh, Olaf Koy, is going to be miles better than him right now. And we saw that at the Czech Cycling Tour. Anyways, move on to the next one, which is this young Spanish rider, Juan Ayuso. But um, yeah, he's going to UAE Team Emirates. Is he 18 or 19? He's well, he's 18. He's very young. Well. So he's born in, the, in, in September 2002, which is very, very young. So he will be 18 once he joins everyone else next year but he doesn't have all that all that many results to his name this seems to be another big talent transfer for UAE we've just put the results like he's the winner of the road race so he's basically doing what Remco Evenepoel did and skipped the under 23 part of the development like finished seventh in junior um, Europeans for both well, he finished seventh and then he finished fifth in the time trial. So he can obviously time trial as he also won the Spanish time trial championships. But yeah, I mean, as a junior, it would have been more interesting if he had won the under 23 category in, in his nationals. That that would have been significant, I'd feel. But I, I don't know. I, I'm... I'm not too sure what UAE team Emirates, they've obviously seen something. Maybe his VO2 max numbers are quite high. That could be a thing, of course. So, yeah, we'll have to see. Moving on to our next rider, a Danish rider, Anton Schaming, who won the, many of you might have heard of the Taiwan KOM Challenge. He won it in 2019. So, well, obviously a good climber. And he finished second in the under-23 European uh, Championships on the road. But he's going to a Uno X development team, which is actually a pro-continental team team so i don't actually know why they've got the development in that as always that they're, they're just kind of hoovering up all the scandinavian talent which is good to see to be honest they're taking over that void which was csc back in the day but i guess you don't have anything to add here no. so yeah going to the next rider who i i can't pronounce that name is this Sanders for yeah going from the under 23 Lotus Did that Zidal kind of... up to the Lotus Zidal main team. So uh, for Flusem, he has some good results. He won Ronde de Lizard, which is a pretty important uh, junior race. He didn't take a stage there, but he won the overall. Uh, he beat his teammate uh, at that race. He looks to be a decent talent. He was he was, he was up there in that race. Also in Lombardia, came 14th. I know that's not the best result in the world, but we are really scraping the bottom of the barrel here. <laughs> He's 20 years old and born in May, so He'll, he'll fit in at the, at the Lotus Hudal team next year, I'm sure. But last on our list, uh, we have Jakob Dubise from Eritrea. Uh, I'm really excited about this. He's coming from the under-23 Groupama FDJ development team from Eritrea. Eritrea have quite a lot of riders coming through the ranks, which is really good to see. Taking a stage win in the Tour de Rwanda last year. Won this this race, the Tour de Espoir, uh, which is an under-23 Cameroonian race. I think they only started that back in 2008 team but I'm liking the way that uh, Eritrea, they're become, becoming one of these emerging cycling nations, such as we saw with Colombia a few years ago. Okay, I know they had Santiago Putero and Luis Herrera back in the 80s, 90s, but Eritrea, they don't really have that. W what do you think of this? Well, as Debesai as, as a surname, uh, you'd be forgiven. His brother was on the World Tour a couple of years back, and I'm sure he will be offloading some good knowledge. To Jakob, who's actually moving to Perconti, he's going to the uh, oh, yeah, Provençal team, uh, Nipal Delco. 
one Provence next year. So he's going to be doing the Coupe de France loop. There won't be anything too new. He was at Group M FDG this year. So he did a lot of the, um, uh, the races with them. Third at Il Piccolo Lombardia. He had a fantastic year in Africa last year. He won the African Continental Championships team time trial. He was alongside his brother and a couple of riders there for Eritrea. And he also managed to, to, to compete in the Eritrean Championships with, with the seniors. Yeah, it, it looks to be decent for, for Debussy. We know that these Eritreans are quite explosive riders and quite talented in, in the breakaway. And it's great to see Eritrea in the sport. They always come out in full force, the fans, of course, to, to cheer their people on. And as well, the more multinational that we get and the more multiracial that we get, the better it is for the sports that we're going to have a proper world tour that reflects the world. One Provence is a very international team. Anyways, that's it. 10 riders that we've looked at for the new pro season. <laughs>